Hello and welcome. I'm speaking to Arsh Maini, CEO of uh, Circo India, the public services and uh, business process outsourcing giant based out of the UK. Arsh, thank you very much for uh, speaking with us. So I'm going to ask you a few questions for uh, and you know on uh, what you're doing in India. But before that, and I know that there are some interesting things on uh, public utilities. Mm -hmm. uh, How is the environment looking for you? Well, the environment isn't bad at all. And that's simply because in the kind of business that we're in, which is really to provide public services. So we're in the infrastructure services business per se. You don't take a short-term view, right? You take a, a long-term view and you ask yourself, is this a service that the people in the country really require? Does the common man on the street really require those services? And is the government or the private organizations, are they willing to build infrastructure? Are they willing to provide those, those services? If you look at the, the key parts of the business that we run out of India, if you look at BPO, We've taken small steps to begin with. We've been here now for quite a few years. But and you also acquired Intellinet earlier, that's which right. was we a made a big one. That's right. We, we did a small acquisition. We learned on the back of that acquisition. We learned how to do business in India. And then we did the big acquisition uh, with, with Intellinet. Now, today, you'd be surprised. There are over 40,000 people that we have in the BPO industry in India. So in our BPO business in India, 40,000 people over 25 cities. Now, that tells you something in terms of the, the spread, the reach, and the breadth of the, of the organization. What we're doing now is, is extending that to, to start providing frontline services, where we would be providing services either on behalf of the government mm -hmm. or on behalf of a private sector organization, but providing it to the end citizen, to the, to the common man on right. the streets. And, and the one interesting one is the uh, bus rapid transport system in Indore. Uh, which you've, uh, you're managing. So tell us about it. It's not, it's not much talked about or written about, so. It's a, it's, it's, it's a very interesting uh, uh, contract for us. Um, it's a very interesting piece of business. Uh, and, it's, and it's doing uh, Touchwood extremely well. Now, if, if you look at that, here's a, here's a local government mm -hmm. um, that's really keen to provide good transport services to the common man on the street. They've brought us in as a partner to deliver those services. And the difference that we can make on the ground is something which is, which is so good. Now, you go at it with a lot of humility. And you say, look, what difference can I make? Right? How can we work with the government? Will they be learning along the way? Absolutely. Uh, uh, will, there be, will there be teething trouble? Absolutely. But you go through those steps. You work in partnership. Uh, and, 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 and this Jugalbandi that you see right behind BBG, the uh, uh, BBG's convention called Jugalbandi, and that really sort of strikes a chord with us. So you, you do that as a partnership. Uh, the, the, very, the, very, the very heartwarming or the very positive thing mm -hmm. that comes out of that is that the customers in the, in, in, in the city, the consumers in the city, the people uh, on the street, they've really taken to it. They've liked that service. Right. And, and today we have uh, not enough buses to... To, to, to service them. Right. So, uh, can you tell us where exactly does uh, Circo play a role in BRTS? And then I'll come to what my larger question on public services is. Sure. So, uh, so uh, we operate and maintain the buses. So, we have the O&M contract, if you will, to operate and maintain buses. The government uh, uh, procures the buses, has built uh, a dedicated corridor for the buses to run on. Uh, we, of course, work uh, in unison with them to, to ensure that the design's right. Uh, that uh, that services are provided right, scheduling is done properly, but then and the tickets are sold as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, uh, the the ticketing is done by the government directly, mm -hmm. but we run uh, as a as a service provider on behalf of the government to provide services to the citizens. Right. So this, uh, I guess, in some ways, is also an indicator of what could happen if more public services, as in run by the government, were outsourced to private hands and you know the sort of pockets of efficiency. So where else are you uh, pitching, and where do you see opportunity in this space? So again, one step at a time. Uh, we've started with buses. Uh, there's a lot to do in that uh, in that one area itself. Right? India is a large country, and, and there's so and, many metros. There's coming so up. many different uh, metros. Mm -hmm. There are established cities. There are uh, there are uh, you know sort of, sort of class B downs and and new metros that are coming up. So so you can see where that demand is going. But but beyond that, we're also looking at metro trains, and ultimately it's metro, metro trains and buses that will run sort of in unison, if you will. Yeah. Right? So when these I said metro, I meant trains. Yeah. These are, uh, so metro trains plus like buses. Bangalore, Hyderabad. Ab ab yeah. Absolutely. But you start to see that, and you start to see uh, uh, where this makes sense in terms of how it all comes together. Right. And, 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 and 
you're also looking at other areas, like, I mean, you're in traditional business process outsourcing. So are you doing something different there uh, in, in countries like India or uh, delivering services from countries like India? I would, you know, I would say we're probably the largest domestic PPO service provider today. That says quite something for a, for a global major so agency. So that's airlines, telecom. That's airlines, that's telecoms, that's banks, right? Mm -hmm. So local Indian organizations that take services from us, right? That's, that's the success story that we, we are so proud of, right? Because we've been able to not just, uh, not just build something that says, here's a great business model, but we, we've been right. able to deliver on it. Of course, 10,000 uh, of our folks, of our uh, 45 odd thousand people in India, service uh, uh, clients outside of India, right? That provides you the leverage, the arbitrage, the, the higher end of services. And what truly differentiates us is our ability to join back office, middle office, and frontline services. And when you can start to do that, you can truly start to become a partner with a large organization, be it a public sector organization or a private sector organization. That's what uh, Circle's about. Right, so uh, last question, I mean, uh, I mean, and split into two parts. Uh, what's your outlook like uh, for the year ahead? And uh, within that, do you see more domestic BPO happening, more Indian companies uh, in the service side uh, handing out more of their processes to firms like yours? I think that's a process that's just going to continue. Right. Uh, as far as uh, as far as the private sector in India is concerned, uh, and outsourcing from that sector in India is concerned, that's not stopping. There are you know, uh, entrepreneurs coming up every day, companies becoming larger and larger com companies becoming even larger. That, that that's something that's happening. Now, when companies are under pressure to deliver, under pressure to 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 to, to save on costs, they look to outsource. They look to outsource uh, uh, and, and partner with good organizations. So so that's a business that will continue to grow. And uh, and and there isn't outlook. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there isn't there for any 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 anything else to, to to say on that. In terms of the overall outlook for us, uh, again, if you look at what's happening in the global economy, it's just coming back up again. Uh, uh, you can see demand on the uptake, and therefore, positive and positive. Right. And so the UK being one of them. I mean, uh, UK economy is stronger. Europe has uh, come out of recession. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> UK is doing really well, and and again, sort of uh, touch wood. Uh, the economy is doing well there. It's on the uptake there. And, and fortunately for us, we have an extremely well-balanced portfolio. So we, not only are we in the UK and the other Anglo-Saxon markets, America, Australia, but we are also very well established in the Middle East, now in India, and, 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 and beyond. So you start to look at, uh, look at the portfolio, and once it gets balanced, you can start to sort of uh, deliver growth and deliver it uh, quarter and on quarter and year on year. Right, Harsh. Uh, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. Thanks.